start off, we're going to mix up some, uh, I have some liquid clear here that I make myself. So um, you can buy this from uh, Bob Ross Inc., but, or you can buy a product like it at Bob Ross Inc. I like making my own. I, I like controlling the creative process, so I make my own. Seems like I'm missing some light though. Well, I'll tell you what, let me, it looks okay on, on the monitor. So you guys be sure you say hello, so I know you're there. Let's go ahead and put some liquid clear up here. And you know, I think as I go, I'm just going to mix some fake little blue with that. Let me kind of do that. Let me do that real quick. There we go. All right, so we're just going to kind of mix a liquid clear Thalo blue on this uh, canvas. Paint sort of a, I don't know, maybe sort of a twilight scene. Bob Ross is kind of a, I used to use this liquid clear, and I, and I really like to watch him, so we'll kind of do this in his honor. It's not going to be an exact recreation, of course, because so we'll just say it's inspired by. You go from there. A little unusual this year. I haven't done too many of that kind of that type of painting. But it's very relaxing, so I thought I'd just do that. Yeah, that's coming together pretty good. Now, if you want to make your own liquid clear, that's pretty easy to do. Mix one part, four, one part of the uh, linseed oil, refined linseed oil, um, with three or four parts of mineral spirits. You might want to start off with three and see if that dries fast enough for you. And that's kind of what I use. I started off using four originally. I'm just smoothing this out here, but then you can. Uh, I'm going to step down to three to slow the drying time um, of my clear. I don't want it to dry too fast today. I'm going to play around with this a little bit. Play around and do some things. I forgot to open up my, my uh, photos pink there. Let me do that real quick. So you can't, not too much appearing to go on here for a bit, but it'll start picking up here in just a second. So the trick to this painting throughout is creating contrast. So we're going to do that right now. We're going to create, we're going to create a contrast area. Now I will use a fan brush to do that. So I'm using a number eight fan brush. I use a lot of different types of fan brushes. But, um, all right, so we're gonna put some titanium white on this fan brush. We're gonna load it up. Load it up really good. So hang on, I'll show it to you. So when you, when you pull that brush through, you don't wanna just pull it straight through, but you wanna pull it through and kind of wiggle it. All right, and get paint all in those, all in those bristles like this. All right, so, hey, Vicky. Hey, Gosla, test Gosla, did I say that right? Let me know. All right, so here we go. We'll do this. Smush it in here. Smush it in here. Oh, Benjamin. Oh, you got a mess going down, don't you? <laughs> maybe, 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 maybe. Pick up a little bit more of this. Titanium wet. Pattern here. I don't want to create a pattern. Actually. I kind of want it to be random. We'll look about the first third of the canvas here. Like this. All right. set all my paints out in advance this time and didn't work. I missed the blank on my midnight black. So let's do that. I got some midnight black. Alright. 
So let's... I'll do this with a filbert brush. I, I like filbert brushes a lot. But you can do this with any brush you want. Just with a fan brush. This is a, I don't know, number four filbert. I have several different filberts. Alright, so we'll just, I'll tell you what, we'll start at the bottom and work our way up. What do you say? So let's just like... Let's add some more right there. Let's put in a little more definition in there. I don't want all of one of my trees to be completely straight. So let me kind of let me bring this one down a little bit further than that one. So let's put some trees in here. course by starting and stopping them higher and lower it, it kind of gives the, the difference of the, the trees are going forward and backward inside the forest I like that I think we'll leave that one alone I like that one all right let's get another one right about here Nobody's saying hello? Okay, you guys are being quiet today. <laughs> so Bruce Spidel won the painting we gave away on the last video when we did Hunker Down. And next week, we'll, next week we'll do another one. Just adding a little bit more color to this side. Alright, let me go back to the other side. Alright, so I'm just going to move across the canvas a little bit because I don't want I don't want to create a pattern of trees. Okay, I'm happy with that one. I'll just leave him alone. Let's do another one. Let's put one a little closer. And maybe, 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 maybe. Alright. Now when I first started painting, I was always trying to get my trees straight. And uh, only to go out when I kind of went out and looked around the forest. There aren't too many trees that are very straight up in the forest, so don't waste your time doing that. Put another one right here. And we'll bring it up like that. There we go. And let's put a big old dude right here. Pull him down a little bit. Hey Deanna, how are you today? It's, it's supposed to be stormy here tonight, so I was going to do a video tomorrow, but I say it's going to be really stormy, so. Alright. Alright, so let's just kind of put some feet on these guys. Yeah, not too much. Not to worry about too much because we're gonna put some ground in there. Just to, this is really more for me to kind of just kind of visualize where the tree's gonna be. All right. Now for this next step, I'm trying to tell you as many many different ways as I can, but because there is no, I don't know. There's really no one right way to do most anything in painting, so just kind of try to experiment and decide what you want to do. But so I'm going to make um, I'm going to thin out some paint here on the palette, some black paint, so I can use my script liner. You can use a script liner to do this or any other brush that makes you happy. So, this got a little bit of. Um, Refined linseed oil here on the on my plate. This little plate that I'm using is a side palette, and I'm just mixing up some 
was loading this brush up with some black paint. So it's it's almost like water. It's like, now you can use um, Otto's paint thinner to do the same thing. Now, and I'm gonna hold the brush back. Watch me paint this as we go. I'm gonna hold the brush back farther, as far back as I can reach. This is a kind of a short brush anyway, compared to some of the other fan brushes that I have. But I'll hold it back as far as I can because I don't really want to um, have a lot of control. I kind of want my hand to shake. Create these tree limbs. In this particular time, I'm painting with my left right hand, which is, I know at Facebook it looks like my left hand, but why they have to mirror image everything, I couldn't tell you. But it's kind of weird, but that's what they do. But since I'm left handed, I'm doing this right handed. You know, it's fine. So we're going to do a little bit of a water scene here today. So for those of you who are interested in waterfalls, we can create a bunch of them. So, let's see, this guy looks like he'd have a branch like right there. Is it more blue, black, round than a green? I don't. I don't know what that. I don't know what you're asking me there. If, but at, if you could ask, if you can rephrase it, I'll be glad to answer the question. The the color that's on the canvas. Of course, it's a black canvas, but and it is black. Um, It's really black, but um, let's put this branch up behind this tree and over this way. There we go. And then it's got um, some liquid clear on it. And then with liquid clear with thalo blue. So it's really like liquid thalo blue on top of the black canvas. Too much time piddling with these air branches, but take as much time as you need when you're doing when you're doing one. If you're doing yours, if you want to redo this, just kind of heave to. Go for it. I encourage you to do it. The um, when I first started painting a couple years ago, one of the things that um, it's kind of interesting looking back is that it used to really make me nervous to paint I mean just I would get all stressed out that I was going to mess something up and uh, there's really not anything you can do with old paint that can't be fixed I was at a class with um, a Bob Ross CRI and in it one of the students made a big boo-boo on his, on his painting, and it took the CRI like less than 90 seconds probably to fix it. So I learned from that. You can just kind of, you know, and sometimes you just kind of, it's not all about trying to fix it. It's just work with, work with what comes up. All right. So I think that's enough tree branching for now. For now. They're blue. That's right, they're blue. They're um they look they look blue.
Well, it's kind of a bluish cast. It goes the way that goes. All right, so I'm going to take a two-inch brush. I'll show you the find it back here. I'm just going to lightly brush this up. And by lightly, I mean really lightly. Because i got very thin paint there. But... On those trees. But, I'll still be manipulating. And of course, down in this area, everything is still blue, right? So, that just pushes those trees back. Just a little tiny bit. Alright. So, um, I think I'll do this with a 2 inch brush. Let's go with. So, I'm going to take some cad yellow to start with. We'll see how this goes see if this does what I want it to do. We're going to mix with that just a little bit of the phthalo blue that we put on the background. We're going to come in here and we're going to paint some grass in here. So this cad yellow sitting on top of that, that phthalo blue. So we're just going to kind of very really lightly touch it right there. Just kind of let it go back up in there. I'm going to paint it all the way through. But we do want to paint it up against that tree a little bit. There we go. I'm just going to add to that just a little bit. Kind of create like a little bit of a misty, foggy of area effect back there. And then we'll start pulling it forward more with more detail. Set that brush aside for just a moment. I'm going to switch over to a fan brush. Can you guys hear me okay? By the way, I guess so, since um, Mary Jane answered my question that I had about her question. Uh, I could use a bigger fan brush than this, probably. Let's go with a number six. All right, so we're going with a number six fan brush. We're going to. Oh, boy, it's stiff. Loosen up, loosen up. I just cleaned the starch these things there. A little bit brittle. Alright, there we go. That's better. Alright, so let's just kind of, I'm kind of, I don't know, maybe we'll leave this out as we go. So we'll start off with back here. We're describing, describing a screen, a stream in here a little bit. I want this to kind of meander pretty good. We'll create a little bit of a waterfall, like right here. Maybe this one should go that way. There we go. Let's create a little bit of a. How's it looking? T guys. So now when you're when you're laying the water down, even though it's moving forward, you want to make sure that you keep the the, the lines of the water straight across. If 
If you don't, it's gonna, the order is going to look a little funny. All right, so let's see. How about like? Hmm. Let's have it split right here. Then we'll have it kind of. And on this side, we're going to have it come like this way. I'm going to add a little bit more texture to that than that. There we go. Alright, we'll worry about the rest of this as we go. So. All right, let's clean that fan brush. Then we'll, then we'll work on the work on this landscape a little bit more. But first, some lemonade. back to work on this landscape part. The answer to that question is yes, I, I do paint with both hands. Alright. So this paint we're putting on here is fairly thick, but it's going on top of liquid clear, so. So the cat yellow is going on over on top of Halo blue on top of liquid clear, so it's you know it's holding it's it's going back on pretty easy. So the creek is just tumbling down through tumbling down. It's adding a little bit of highlight here. A little bit more highlight right there, maybe a little bit more highlight right there. That looks okay. I'm just looking over at the monitor to see, see if I can see what you guys are seeing, and it looks pretty okay to me. If you can't see something, just let me know. If you can't hear me, let me know. Alright, alright, so let's go with this over here now. So we're gonna add some more stuff than just grass here, but this will get us this will get us started. So we don't we're not really trying to cover up all this dark. We, we want all that dark. That dark helps us with the contrast. But we are. So we're leaving some some spaces. In particular, you might notice I've left some spaces in places where the water is falling um, just to indicate some landscape there. Now if you want on your painting you can add some uh, maybe like brown in there or some dark sienna or something like that. Alright, so let's, okay that's got a good, we've come a long way pretty fast, huh? Will you be teaching more paintings? I will be taking, um, I will be teaching. Um, I'll just keep right on going. Um, a fall scene? Yeah, sure. I'll be glad to do that. My wife would like that, actually. She likes the fall. She likes autumn. So it's just a different a color scheme, but we could actually kind of do the same painting in an autumn kind of a scene. That's a great idea. All right, so let's... I'm going to set this brush aside for a minute. It's just a one-inch brush. And let's go with, uh, I'm going to use a small fan brush this time. 
Oh, nope. This is, nope, this is oils. Over black canvas, on a black canvas, black gesso canvas. All right. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to mix, what have I got here? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna pick up some midnight black with just a tad bit of green in it. And I'm gonna put a couple more trees in here. Let's put one like right. Yeah. Alright, I'll still use the fan brush. I started started to change my mind, but let's just bring this tree right down to this piece of land right here. And I want the tree to be a little bit wider. So I'm just gonna make another line. I'm trying. I'm not trying to keep it straight at all. There's no straight, very no straight trees in nature. Although they look straight sometimes. All right. Let's put a little. We got some little foots here on them. We'll worry about that in a second. All right. Let's put another tree. Like. Yeah. Composition wise. All right. So. Hmm. All right, uh, let's put this tree over here, right next to the street, and we'll bring it down farther. You guys, if you have any questions as we're going along, just feel free. And even if if you're watching this in the aftertake, um, ask them anyway, because I always follow up with, with everybody. So, um, thank you, Pat. You know, Mary Jane, I'm not on YouTube. Uh, I've been thinking about doing that. Uh, I just don't want to spend more time. Okay, I've decided this tree over here needs to be bigger. I just, it needs to be fatter. He's closer to us and he feels like a fatter tree. There we go. All right, so this side, I want a tree that's kind of like that sooner than later. So let's put this guy in here, right here. Just with this big dude. So this, I'm just doing this with a fan brush. I'm just turning the fan brush. Let me show you on this piece of plexiglass here. So on this on this fan brush, pulling these trees down, I'm just turning it right on its end. I'm turning it, tilting it just a little bit like uh, now you get a reflection. Alright, so I'm turning it just a little bit like this. Alright, now I can't see it all. Hang on guys. Let me move the lights. That was right. That's better. All right, so I'm turning it right on its edge like this, and then we're just pulling it down, pulling it straight down. Well, straight as you, you don't really need to make your hand hold it too, too, too much. So plexiglass is a lot slippery than the canvas, but I hope you get the idea. All right, so I'm going to move this tree down just a little bit more because I don't want it to line up with that tree right over there. So let's just pull it on down a little bit more. Just a little bit more. All right. Okay, I want to highlight these trees. And then, we'll, then we'll move on forward and landscape some more. So we're kind of... We're not... We're not working one element at a time. Um, we're not like doing all the trees and then all the landscape. And we're not doing it that way. We're, we're moving from the back forward. So we did like the background first, and these background trees, and then we did some of this, and then we put the water, then we put the water in, and then we can move forward with the landscape. So we're kind of moving from the back forward. Um, you don't have to paint this far forward. I was just kind of figuring out where I'm going to go with this water, but. You can like paint the first waterfall and do it all in, paint the next waterfall and do it all in. Just make sure you keep this this moving water, make sure you keep it horizontal because if you don't, it's going to look kind of funny. It's going to look a little weird to you for some reason. All right, so let's, let me clean my palette off a little bit here. Hey! Uh, 
I, I might consider that, Jaina, once, um, once it dries. It'll take it a couple of weeks to dry. If you want to follow up with me. Hey, Ray. Hey, Brenda. All right, so let's see. I was going to mix up some color here for... All right, so I want to highlight the side of these trees. So I'm going to do that with a mixture of titanium white and some phthalo blue. I'm not going to mix it too perfect. I don't want to take all of the texture out of it. Then I'm going to pull it up on my palette knife in a little bead. Now, there's a, there's a couple of ways of loading your palette knife I'd like to talk about. Just for people who you, you might have trouble with it, loading your knife, uh, getting too much on it or getting too, too little on it. So what you're looking for is a bead of paint. So there's two ways to do that. You can brush it out straight and cut your knife across it and pick up a bead about like that. Can you see that? It's a pretty small bead. I'll try it again. There's a pretty good size bead that time. Or you can kind of, uh, let me show you the plexiglass. So you can, you can pull your knife across it like this and cut it. And so that's kind of the pattern right there. Or you can pull, push your knife across it this way and it'll pick the paint up as well. So for some people it's easier to load it that way. So, you know, give it a try. All right, so we're just gonna pick up a bead of paint. We're gonna do some highlighting on these trees. I'm just going to add this highlight on the inside of these trees. So this is kind of like putting the paint on the mountain, more or less. At the Sorry, i got to block you guys for just a second here. I'm short, so when I do vertical canvases, they're taller than me usually. All right, so... And we've got some texture from the, the black paint that we put on there. And so um, you can see that some of it picked up on the knife. You see the black there on the paint? So, and that's okay. Well, we don't really care too much about that. It's, it actually helps to create shadows on the, on the tree trunks. So we're using the same color, the same phthalo blue. Ray, how is the weather out there, buddy? It sounds like there's been a lot of wildfires where you live out that way. All right, so we'll just kind of add a little bit right here on this tree. This keeps the color scheme kind of kind of jiving. I don't have enough. I don't have enough highlight on this tree. So when we're, when we're putting this on, we're, first of all, make sure you don't put your finger on it like this. If you do, you're going to um, you're going to get like a, a peanut butter on bread effect. It's not going to break for you. So keep your hand fingers like this, like this, and then just touch it as light as you can. And with a little practice, you'll have it you'll have it down pat pretty quick. Okay, so now, well, that's that's a good point. Who said that? That's a good point, Diane. Yep, we're going to use blue on that side, but we're going to use something a little bit darker on the other side. But we're going to, I want to have, I want a three-tone tree here. Now, you could use, um, the tree itself is midnight black, so it, with a, just a tad of green in it. Um, but I'm going to, so you can use that. And that'll work out pretty good. But I'm going to try to mix up just a little bit of um, Payne's Gray. We're going to try that. I haven't tried that before, but we're going to try it this time and see how that looks. Let's see if that does it. Give us a, a nice contrast between those two. So this is Payne's Gray. It's kind of a, a bluey, bluey. I don't even know if that's a word, but. <laughs> sort of a blue tone kind of a color. 
and as you're doing this, you don't want all of your highlight to be like right down the center of the tree because this is not how trees sit. Just so it just kind of mix it up a little bit. Don't go back and what you see, I've done some of that right there, but all right, so let's do that some more. That kind of looks okay. I kind of like that. Can you guys see that? Can you guys see how that works out? So play, you still got you still have the black underneath showing through, but kind of get this gray to go with it. Alright, one more. Let's do one more. I'm just kind of mixing it a little bit on the palette as I go. It's lightly touching, lightly touching. Alright, so I think I'll I think I'll leave that alone right now. Although I think just for my own sake, I want to take I'm gonna take some of this Payne's gray, a little bit of blue, and mix that just a little bit. And I'm gonna pull a little bit of that like right down the side of this tree using a fan brush. Yeah, I kinda like that. This is just kind of mixing the three paints together there. Just to pull a little extra, a little extra on those trees. On those trees. I don't want to do them all, just a couple. There we go. Alright, let's clean that. Alright, so you might wonder. Hey dude, why did you leave that open right there? And that'd be a good question. We're gonna do something with it here in just a second though. So I'm gonna clean a little bit of paint off my finger. So I don't get it all over my brushes. Because I forgot to put my gloves on. Oh yeah. <laughs> Alright. So let's see. Let's get some. Do I have anything like that? Alright, tell you what, we're gonna do some color mixing here. We're just going to start off with Van Dyke Brown, straight up. We're going to outline some a little bit of landscape, but we're going to keep it keep it dark with this brown. And then we're going to mix up. I'm going to show you how to mix another brown called a Christmas brown. Just a second. Just need to find uh, where did I put my knife? There it is. All right, so let's get let's get some Van Dyke Brown. We're gonna come in like. We're gonna come in first of all. Let's come in like right here. And I want this to cut out into that waterfall, and then I want it to come back, come back, come back, come back. There we go. And then from that point, we're just gonna lay in some color. I want to create. Well, I'll just pull this on across for right now. How's that looking for you guys? Can you guys? Oh, it looks really dark, doesn't it? All right. Well, let me adjust the lights a little bit. Does that help any? You see in a second. I have about a 20-second delay on my side. Well, I don't see that it helps much, but it doesn't seem to hurt. So let's let's put the rest of this color on here. Some more of that. Let's come in here. We'll put another rock right here. I'm just kind of manipulating the textures a little bit. here but I'm going to make a few little changes to that one as we go I think 
And Bob's original painting, when he painted that, he did. He only did one rock, I think, in the middle. I can't remember exactly. I'm just going to scoop up some more of this midnight black and put it over here in the corner so it doesn't really matter all that much. I'm just putting some color in here that we can, we can work with later. Okay, now let's, now let's fiddle with it a little bit. I think, let's get some, I want to get some, Lizard and Crimson. I hope this comes out the way I want it to. It's a Lizard and Crimson. Yeah. And some Sap Green. We're going to take those two. I'll just give them some Sap Green over here. And I'll put it over here too. I'm kind of mixing up what they call a Christmas Brown. So it makes a nice warm brown because it's got all that red in it. So let's make some white with that now and see what we got. Alright. So let's put some highlights on here. So we're going to come across, let's see, I kind of want... So now, if you don't spend a lot of your, expend a lot of your effort trying to make your kind of rocky cliff faces look a particular way, if you kind of let the canvas kind of talk to you as you go, you'll find it works out pretty good. And I'll show you what I mean in just a second. All right, I'll put some more of this over here. So we're kind of mixing two colors, three colors, we got the Van Dyke brown below that. We've got some titanium hot, uh, titanium white mixed in with this kind of Christmas brown that we made from the um, lizard and crimson and sap green. And we're just kind of laying in some color here. So those three colors, you got a three color. You see that you got a lot going on here in the color wise. Carry it forward. So we're going to take. I want to take this. I want to take this down like that. And one more go. So the paint is relatively thick here. I'm still just kind of piddling with it. I'm trying to decide if I want it to be that. I think like, I don't know if I can do this or not. We're gonna find out in about two seconds. So we're gonna try something different. We're gonna get, I'm gonna double load a brush, which means I'm gonna put one color on one side and a different color on the other side. So you can see I got, Yep, I did have. Now I don't. Alright. So I have Christmas brown on the bottom. And I have a lighter brown on the top. I'm going to come right in here on the top of this rock. And we're just going to take it in here and we're going to turn it like this. It's going to kind of create a rounded rock. Top up there. And while we're at it, we can put a couple more rocks in the landscape. Why not? Let's do that. Let's do that. Let's see. Let's take. Let me put that. How's this look? There you go. So we're just taking the side of the brush. Um, let me show you what we're doing here to make those 
So we're, do we're double loading a brush with two colors. And then we're taking it. We're bringing the brush in sideways. Like, why does it look green? Okay, it's not green, but is it? No, it is a little bit green. I know that. Sorry, but anyway, we'll pretend like it's not. That's where I just pushed it up on the screen. So we're just bringing this brush in like this, right on the edge, and then we're just giving it a little turn. Bring it in and give it a little turn. Bring it in and give it a little turn. And voila, rocks. So I hope that helps you. Not, hopes that helps you not struggle a lot with rocks. Let me pick up this color again. Put a couple more rocks in here. Alright. Okay, let's see what else we got going here. So we're going to want to soften this, this hard edge that we just put in in a couple different ways. Um, so let's take our brush with our cad yellow and our green. We're just going to, and we might have to take a little bit of linseed oil. Where did it go? Oh, okay. Sorry, set it on the wrong side. So I'm just going to take this, let's put a little bit on the palette, just a tiny bit. I don't want too much of this, it'll make it too slick. I'm just going to put a little bit of it on there. And I got it too slick. Alright, let's do it again. Alright. We're just going to tap, tap, tap. Tap this in on this edge. Tap this in on the edge, like that. And then I'll give it a little bit of a rise above this stuff in the background. And if you get a little bit of the brown on there, that's okay. You can put some down around in the darker spots if you want to. Alright. Okay, any questions so far? I hope I'm doing a good job of explaining it for you guys. Alright. So, as usual, I've exhausted my titanium white, so we're going to pick some titanium white up. Okay, how about that? It's not. Pick up the wrong two. Alright, let's get some titanium white out of here. I usually squeeze a lot of titanium white out because I use so much of it and it's and it dries the least fast of like most any color. Transparent colors and lighter colors like white dry s much slower than other things. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna kind of start in the middle with this, just to kind of see how how the blue's doing. All right, so the blue's looking pretty good right there. Can you guys see that? Okay. I'm gonna wait for it to come up on the monitor so you make sure you can see it. Okay, I just barely touched the canvas with that. Yeah. Okay. Now you can see it. So before we so before we go jumping in there with that color, I want to do I want to outline the, the bottom of the mountain or the bottom of the cliff. I mean, so let's do that in a couple different ways. Um, let's take um, let's take a filbert brush. Let's put, let's kind of draw some rock, just kind of tap some rocks in here like that. Or they could be rocks, they could be bushes, as I'll show you in just a second. I, um, once I started tapping, I was just like, maybe, maybe it could be bushes. All right, so I'm just doing, just taking this brush, it's pretty heavily loaded, but I'm just tap, tap, tapping it right there at the base of the, so I'm kind of bleeding up into the mountain a little, into the cliff a little bit, but not too much. So we're going to have, evidently we're going to have some more landscape down here. So let's 
see where that takes us. All right, kind of like that. All right. So let's, all right, let's highlight that then before we hop in there. So I'm going to take a little bit more of this linseed oil, tap it into this yellow, and with paint that thick, you want to make sure that when you're tapping it on your palette, you see little ridges start to come up in the paint, because if you don't, it's probably not going to stick the way you want it to. I think I would like a little blue in that. Make it a little more green. There you go. So we're just tapping it with the edge of the brush. Just tap, tap, tap. I'm going to take a little bit of that color and tap, tap, tap it down into the water a little bit. Kind of create just a little bit of work, just a little bit of reflection. And then with a nice dry brush, we're just going to take that create some reflections there. There we go. Just like that. Everybody's so quiet today. So let's take, let's go ahead and create some more water down here. So let's just kind of, so let's have some titanium white there on the brush. You can mix a little bit of that up there in that color if you want. But we're going to go back in just a second. Do some more with that. So, take some titanium white, go in here at the base, where we got this stuff, we're just going to scribe in that's a little too much, here we go, alright, so we're just going to kind of scribe in some watermarks, same on this side, again, making sure you keep your, keep your knife, you know, horizontal. Put some more in here. Just kind of randomly lay them in there, wherever you want them to go. And I'll put another one over here. Maybe one up here closer to the reflections. Now, when you put watermarks in, anytime you put watermarks in like that, um, at least this is my theory, uh, it can be your own theory, but the closer they are to me, the sharper they are. So, um, if you take a brush and you and you brush over the top of those, they'll smooth out really nice, but they'll they'll and it'll be softer, so it'll push them back into the push them back into the painting. So, you know, you decide how soft you want them to be. Usually, mine are pretty soft, but these are pretty close, so I'll leave them on back there. All right, so let's. Put. What else shall we do here? We could just we could just allow this to come on down and the water to come on down. But if we're gonna and, and I think I might I might like that. But let's just tell you what if we're gonna do that, let's add a little bit more color in there. I 
want to cover up all that dark. The dark is our friend. All right, but let's put some rocks out here. You know, I could, I'm sure Bob put a giant tree in there or something. But let's put a rock in there, shall we? So let's, let's do this the easy way. So we're just going to take some color on a brush. We're going to kind of, let's put one like right here. I'm just brushing in some black right there. Just kind of using up my black. And then we'll put another one over here on this side. Like that. a little bigger, maybe run it off with a color. Okay. Tell you what though, we're gonna put that out there. Let's have a little bit of fun with it. Let's take a little more fun with it. Let's take and put some of this highlight on it. Just a little. I don't want to Okay, before I do that, I'll change my mind again. Let's take some of our groovy yellow and blue green color. Let's tap that in. Now this outline's a little round, more rounder. Suddenly it's gone from being a rock to being an island, I guess. All right, so. That's kind of groovy. Now let's take and put, let's put some lands, like, let's give a little more texture to it by putting in some, a little bit of rockiness about it. Let's make that not so even. There we go. Maybe a little on this side. Let's make this part out here, like right here, a little more rocky. Alright, I kind of like that. And then, we say, let's... Let's see what I got still left here on the palette. Uh, I got a little bit of that. Well, while I'm thinking about it, I don't know really what else I might want to do. I don't think that looks pretty good. Let's put some water lines in around this. Around this rock and this rock. Put another one out here. Now, these uh, these watermarks have a little bit of blue in them. It makes them a little bit blue because they're a little bit closer. Alright y'all, got any thoughts on this? I think I want to, I want to tap in a little bit more landscape up at the top. I think, I think, I think. So let's get that, a little bit of that. I just want to push some of this grass over into the stream. That side's okay, this side needs a little bit, there we go. Just a little touch in here and there. All right. Okay, guys. Well, listen. I think that I think that'll do. I, I don't think I really want any more trees out here. I don't think they, they add, would add much to the painting wise. Though I do think, you know, I was talking about softening these. Think of, well, soften these just a tad. Just a tad. Since I talked to you about them, you can see what I did here. You can see it. You see how, they, how it pushes them back? It gives them just a little farther distance in the painting. It pushes the painting back just a little bit more. All right, so there we go. I think that'll do it. Oh, thank you, Pat. I'm glad to hear it. Thank you, Tina. 
Jacqueline, hello. Glad you guys dropped in. All right, so there's a triple waterfall, so more or less, plus one, two, three more. Oh, actually, I did odds and I didn't even mean to. <laughs> All right, so uh, if you guys think of any questions, and when you go back and watch the video again, or if you do, um, feel free to ask questions. I hope you'll like put a like on my fine arts page and uh, it'll let you know whenever there's there's a new video coming. We do a new video every couple days, so um, I'm glad to answer questions. And about once a week, we give we give a painting away. So. Uh, if you live in the continental United States, that's as far as I can afford to mail stuff. I'm a poor, starving artist. So anyway, thank you guys for tuning in, and we will see you on the next video. Thank you, Deanna. Oh, Pat, you'll, you will love them. They, they, oils are so easy to push around. Okay, well, that's it, guys. See you on the next one.